Hello, my name's John Manzella, and welcome to the show. Today, my guest is Sam Baker, Director of Global Development for SR Instruments. Sam, welcome to the show today. Hi, John. Sam, as you know, more and more American companies are getting involved internationally. And in many ways, they have to, because more and more of their revenue is determined or based on international business. You've been in this business for over 30 years, you'd mentioned. Yes. How is this business different than, say, it was a couple of decades ago? Well, one of the things that's, that's really uh, something that I've seen is that a lot more smaller business are, businesses are able to get into the business. Very important. And they're, they're able to get into the business because of the Internet. I mean, any small company that has a website is probably getting international inquiries. I have actually, and it's amazing to me, but I've actually talked to companies and say, I say to them, okay, you've got a website. It's really, really nice. It's good to look at. Uh, what are you doing with the inquiries? And the, amazing to me that people would say, well, uh, we just don't do anything with them. We sort of throw them away. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's incredible, but it actually is true. They just don't know what to do. They kind of freeze in a, uh, like the deer in the headlights. They don't know what to do, and they look at them, and it's a, it's foreign language. It, right, it's it's right. not in a for, it's in English, but it's a foreign place, and they aren't familiar with it, and they just ignore it. Sam, for the small and medium sized manufacturer that's interested in exporting, how many markets do you suggest they begin entering initially? I would say start with the with the close ones and maybe the easy ones. Canada, I mean, especially Mexico, Canada. I mean, we in this part of the world we don't consider Canada even to be an export market in a lot of cases. Right. A lot of companies do consider it as a domestic market, but we uh, and we more or less do that at our company. But certainly Canada, certainly Mexico, certainly uh, uh, places that are very um, export friendly. I mean, mm -hmm. European markets. Uh, for us right now, as I look at the landscape, the Middle Eastern markets are ones that are very interesting. Now, that's a different thing, and that's something that maybe you'd want to wait on until you get your feet wet in, in a more, uh, I don't want to say friendly, but a more, a, a, an atmosphere that you're more familiar with. Well, let me ask you culturally and otherwise. just that. Here's, yeah, uh, yeah. On the other side of the coin, you've got China. Mm -hmm. 1.3 billion population, right. third right. largest world economy. Exactly. And you've been yep. spending I quite a bit of time. China a couple but of weeks But that is ago. a difficult country for small and medium-sized companies to initially break into, isn't it? In the, when I started uh, doing this kind of business, it would have been very difficult. These days, not difficult much at easier. all. Much, much easier because, number one, you have a bunch of people in China who are running businesses who have been trained in the United in the States. US, right. The guy that I was working with in, uh, in Shanghai, he, he went to school in Boston. And uh, he speaks the language. It's, the language isn't a problem. The, the understanding of U.S. culture isn't a problem. That's another, another fear that small companies have is this whole aspect of cultural accommodation. And people have gotten rich writing books about how to, how, to, uh, how to deal with certain people and when in Rome do it, you know, all this kind of stuff. The reality is that the world has, has gotten a lot smaller in that way. Certainly you have to be aware of cultural things, certainly you have to be aware of languages, but you don't, it's not like it used to be at all because you're dealing with, I have rarely in the last 10 years had to do any work through a translator. Right. used to be when I would go to places like Korea or someplace, I would have to work with a translator. And in those days, I've sold medical products most of my career. In those days, I would be talking to perhaps a group of nurses or something, and I would have to work through a translator. Now, once in a while, I will find somebody who is, is uh, maybe the, uh, the, the head of a company that I need to talk to, and maybe they're an older person, and maybe they don't do well with the language or they're not comfortable with it. In that case, then I will we can use an interpreter, but there's always an interpreter available. I was right. just in Japan and uh, talking to a head of an engineering uh, part of a company, and he was uncomfortable with the language, but he certainly understood it. But he brought in one of his young engineers who studied English and spoke fluently, and we just, we just talked well, that way. Let me way. ask you, I know a number of small and medium-sized and large companies mm -hmm. have a, a pretty important fear, and yeah. that is the fear of intellectual property being stolen. Right. Has right. that been a problem for your company? From time to time, we have had situations where, uh, not, a, not in the current company, because we have so many competitors that we, <laughs> you know, people are, people are, are uh, it, one scale looks like another one or whatever, mm -hmm. but, but uh, we don't have so many competitors in the OEM part of the business. We have competitors in our regular line. But uh, if 
a company worries about um, uh, being copied, then they might as well shut their doors because sooner or later it's going to happen sooner anyway. Sooner or later they will I mean, be copied. Yeah. Now you can go it's to the, the key just to stay six months ahead exactly, in terms of your technological exactly. development. Yeah. And and in addition to technology, the thing that puts a company uh, on the map for another company is the building of, of relationships and the whole it's business. All about the, the whole the whole uh, idea of international business is relationships. It's building those close personal relationships with the people that you're doing business with to the point where they trust you and you trust them. And that means communication, regular communication with the company. How often do you have to visit? Top these quality and all that. That's a diff- that's a funny thing because in in the eighties and nineties it was you needed to be there a lot. Nowadays, because of the internet, because of the phone and Skype and all Skype, kinds right. of things, uh, you can communicate, and there there is not that same level of requirement that there used to be when they wanted you to come and and uh, and be face to face. You still need to do it. You still need to maintain those relationships. You still need to get them going. One of the best ways that I found to do it for a small company like ours without a huge budget is to go to uh, well-known international trade shows. Mm-hmm. Then you can co- send a, a notice to all your contacts and say, I'm going to be here. And uh, then you set up a schedule. And, and at this, uh, the l- most recent uh, medical show, which is the largest in the world in, in uh, Dusseldorf, Germany, uh, I met with probably 25 different people over a, f- over, over a, f- a four-day period. And uh, we're, we're beginning to do business with at least five to uh, eight of those companies right now, maybe even more coming along the way. In terms of the most difficult country to do business, yeah. what would that be? Um, I don't, you know... Um, what particular region of the world? Maybe that's an easier yeah. question. Um, Japan has, has been somewhat, somewhat difficult, although... Uh, I, I worked for, uh, for a couple of companies and started their international business. Um, a company that I worked for was, uh, at one time, we were doing over a million dollars a year in business. I think they're doing far more than that now in Japan. And uh, I actually found it to be quite enjoyable working there and, and made some friends there, have managed to keep those friends, and uh, those folks are actually able to help me in getting other business going. But why initially? Was it so difficult? Initially, it cultural initially in Japan, it was the cultural thing. That's changed a lot. The, the cultural things have changed an awful lot. It's primarily because of the internet, primarily because really? of the, the ease of communication has really changed a lot. You always have to be aware of the, of the cultural things and, and the, the basics of that. And uh, you want to be, uh, you know, not using slang and and not so casual and you know I always uh, in any communication I always address somebody Mr. So and So Miss So and So if you can tell sometimes you study you up in advance when you're going I to study in country. advance right and and these days too because of the internet you can look up and find out numerous things about the companies that you're working with you can find out you know where they do business. Many times I look at companies, I, f- I see their distributor list, so I know who they're working with. And in some cases, I can also work with their distributors. That gives me a, a wide open door to a lot more business than, uh, you know, to in the days before the Internet when you had to, you know, ask a lot of questions and get face-to-face with them and all that. These days, it's, it's a lot easier. What is the one piece or the most important piece of advice you would share with small and medium-sized companies today? Number one, don't be afraid of, of, of getting out there. And look in your own area. Almost every place in the United States have, has a U.S. Department of Commerce, all the major cities. Or, I mean, you, can, you, can, you don't have to go very far to find a Department of Commerce who has a trade assistant who will come to your company and talk to you and find out, are you ready to export? What do you have that's exportable? All of those things. And, there, and take advantage of the sources of help that are available SBA has got a big program they're trying to help. Uh, there are so many programs. And then world, then trade, local trade organizations, world trade organizations, get involved in those things. Talk to the people who are already exporting, and they'll tell you 
how much how exciting it is, how easy it is, um, challenges and everything. But don't be put off by uh, fears of language and fears of culture and fears of all those things because these days they just don't exist, not the way they did even right. 20 years ago or 30 years ago when I started. Sam, this. you're a wealth of knowledge, and I appreciate you <laughs> being on the show today. Thank appreciate you very much. It. Okay, thank you.